Epidemiologists are continuing to track the spread of coronavirus. We now have first confirmed cases of the virus in places like Brazil, Norway, Greece, Pakistan, and Georgia. Now, in many of these cases, we can identify how a person got the virus, what their source of exposure was. The other way to think about this is something called community spread. Now, that is when cases start appearing without a known source of exposure. So in Brazil, for example, uh, the person who tested positive had just been in Italy, where there's a lot of the virus. In Norway, the person had just returned from China. But in some countries, they already have community spread. That includes Hong Kong, Italy, Iran, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, Taiwan, and Thailand. So that means people are showing up with the virus, and it is not clear how they got it. Well, tonight we have what appears to be the first case of community spread here in the United States, in Northern California. The origins of this case is unknown. Yesterday, the CDC said that this was likely to happen. They also emphasized that people should not panic. Here to explain the trajectory of this virus, Dr. Peter Hotez, the dean for the National School of Tropical Medicine at the Baylor College of Medicine, who back in 2014 explained to us how the Ebola virus works and how to balance fear and reason surrounding that outbreak when we took the uh, subway. Um, so, doctor, let's start with this, the, the, the news about community spread. Um, the CDC essentially saying this was inevitable. What, what does it mean if there's a case in the U.S. that doesn't have any known links to any of the, the sort of main countries? Well, you know, first of all, thanks for having me back. You know, what we have seen now is that there's transmission in multiple countries, the countries that you mentioned, including Italy and Iran. And now we may have to add the United States to that list. You know, the World Health Organization is not officially calling this a pandemic yet, but we seem to be uh, inching in that direction. And, and the concern is that we're going to start seeing a uh, foothold that this virus gains in the United States. And the evidence for that is person to person uh, ongoing transmission. You know, the president tonight uh, tried to emphasize the few, the small numbers of, of 15, but that's that's not the point. The point is, we know these numbers are going to go up. We are going to start seeing human to human transmission, and we really have to get ready for this and, and protect our two most vulnerable populations. Which are? Well, number one are the healthcare workers. Uh, we saw in Wuhan, in central China, how there were more than a thousand healthcare workers affected. There were six deaths. You can imagine what would happen in the United States if we saw uh, an epidemic among our healthcare providers. That would cause a lot of concern and panic. So we absolutely need to protect them by providing the PPE, the personal uh, protective equipment uh, that they need. We also need a better diagnostic and, and making it more accessible. That's a huge problem because we're learning about this virus that many people don't present with classic respiratory sy symptoms. We saw in China, sometimes they present with abdominal symptoms. They were mistakenly put on the surgical ward. Uh, that will happen in the United States uh, without a good diagnostic test that's rapidly accessible. Uh, we've seen epidemics in hospitals. So getting that diagnostic test other than the PPE is, is a big priority. The second, of course, is our older population because we've seen the higher mortality rates among those over the age of 60 and those with underlying chronic conditions such as diabetes or, or hypertension. So we will see an increase in numbers. The big question is, are we going to be looking at small uh, uh, community level transmissions in, in a few countries? Uh, cities across the country, or are we going to be looking at something much larger? This is a new virus agent. We have absolutely no way of predicting. So the, the prudent thing, is, as the CDC talked about yesterday, is to anticipate the worst and hope for the best. So when you say it's a new virus agent, what, are the, what do we know about this, uh, this virus, and what are the variables that will determine uh, just, just how far it spreads? Well, you know, we've seen some early numbers coming out of China suggesting that it's a pretty highly transmissible virus. So let me give you an example. Seasonal flu has a number assigned to it called one point, a, num a number called the reproductive number 1.3. That means if a single person gets flu, on average, 1.3 other individuals will get it. It's transmissible, uh, but not nearly among the most transmissible agents we know about. For this one, the numbers go as high as 3.58, up to up to four. Uh, and so huh. that means it's a very highly transmissible virus. We're also hearing different stories about the case fatality rate. Uh, initially, numbers coming out of China said 2 percent, and others began dismissing that number, saying, well, that doesn't really account for the number of people with low-grade symptoms or have no symptoms at all. But yesterday, uh, Bruce Elward from the World Health Organization uh, gave us some 
some very concerning news that, yes, indeed, that 2 percent number uh, case fatality rate looks real. And, and if that's the case, uh, that, that's of, of great concern, because, you know, flu, which is a bad illness, and as the president learned about flu tonight, uh, today, that it can kill up to 40,000 40, Americans, 60,000 Americans, a case fatality rate of 2 percent is 10 to 20 times higher than flu. So this, so I think, you know, it's a, it's a, it's an art, right, to convey bad news without, without spreading panic. Um, this is a serious virus infection, and, and it's going to take all hands on deck to do this. Uh, I know uh, the president did the right thing in the sense of trying to find someone to oversee uh, operations, recognizing that this goes beyond the health sector. Look, when we had to combat Ebola, we actually said, had to send in the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, we needed the U.S. military uh, to help us. So we ha he, he's right to anticipate that we're going to have to go across multiple agencies, possibly including the U.S. military. Whether Vice President Pence is, is actually going to devote his full time to this, you know, when Ron Klain was doing this uh, during Ebola in the Obama administration, you know, it was 24-7 yeah. uh, for him and, and his staff. And, and so I don't know how committed the vice president's going to be to really taking this on. Uh, Dr. Peter Hotez, that was extremely informative. Thank you very much.